Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, I've got a pretty interesting uh, package of software that I wanna show you guys. And you can probably tell from the title and you can see on the screen right now, that is called the Utilu or Utilu, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I'm pronouncing this first part of the name wrong. Uh, Internet Explorer Collection. Yes, what this is, is, a, is basically a collection of a bunch of different versions of Internet Explorer that you can download in one package, in one installer, and install just a, a ton of different versions of Internet Explorer on your system. If we, if we scroll down here on this website, I'm going to have this link down below, you can see that these are all of the versions, version 1 through 8, with also some, you know, like you got version 1.5, version 3.01, 3.03, so you, you've got uh, a, a decent selection of different versions of Internet Internet Explorer that you can run on your system. And this was actually a piece of software that I first heard about, I, I want to say back when I used Windows XP, which was many years ago as my main operating system. I recently kind of just thought of this the other day, and I thought this would be a really cool video to do. This, when it came out, uh, as it says right here on the website, uh, this is useful for web developers. That was kind of one of the, I guess, target audiences of this program. So, you know, this would be useful for if you were developing a website, you could basically test in multiple versions of Internet Explorer how your site displayed. We're just going to kind of be taking a look at this in this video. So I've got a fresh install of Windows XP right here. And this is the file that you actually download. It's called IE Collection 1721, uh, which is 1.7.2.1 is the file version that you can see right there. It comes in at 55.4 megabytes. And uh, when you actually run it, one of the things that I think is pretty cool is it actually comes up in this Vista-like installer right here with a custom uh, title bar and some custom buttons. I do not have a custom theme applied uh, to this system. If I open up a Explorer window right here, you can see that it's got the standard XP Luna theme. So this is actually this installer itself kind of having this custom theme, which is definitely pretty nice. Um, on the website right here, if we actually go back to this briefly, if we scroll down, um, you can see that right here there is a, a chart of kind of all of the versions of Windows that this uh, package supports. So it supports all the way uh, from 95 all the way up to Windows 7 x64. So if we click on next in the installer here, you can obviously choose where you want to install it to. And right here is where um, it will kind of give you a, a list of all of the components that it has here. So it just basically says right off the bat that version 1.0 is not compatible, so we cannot install that even if we wanted to. Um, you can choose from a full installation, which for whatever reason is not the full installation because it does not include version 3.03, .03, so you have to manually check that, and then it will go to custom installation. And then you also have a compact installation, which basically will only install uh, versions 6 through 8, as well as some uh, additional components down here at the bottom. Um, so we're just going to go with a full installation. We're going to also check version 3.03, .03, just to make sure that everything is checked. And we're going to click Next here. And this is the uh, name of the program group that will appear in, in the start menu. So we'll just leave it as a Utilu or Utilu. I'm pretty sure that I'm pronouncing this wrong. IE Collection. We'll click on Next. And now it's going to say, okay, do you want to install it for this user or for all users? And the, this is the funny thing is if you click on uh, create desktop icon, you'll notice that it's not checked by default. So when you click create desktop icon, uh, well, you're just going to see what happens. And we'll do the same thing for the uh, quick launch icon as well. So we're going to click next. It's going to show you all of the versions it's going to install, all these components here. We'll hit install. And you'll see here that once it uh, finishes installing, it is going to... Uh, dump just a massive amount of IE icons on the desktop. So for the quick launch icon, uh, I believe it will actually add all of those to the quick launch menu as well. So if we go to toolbars and uh, quick launch, you'll see that it's just added all of those to the uh, quick launch menu, which is definitely pretty funny. Now it has for whatever reason, like all of these or almost all of these versions checked uh, aside from 2.01, 3.0 and 3.01 uh, checked to automatically start like when you're like once you click finish. So to avoid that, we're just going to uncheck all of these, uh, at least for now. We we will open them up all, like all at the same time later on in, in this video to show you guys that they actually do work all at the same time. And you'll see that it, it actually, uh, I may have still had one of those uh, check boxes uh, checked, but it did actually open up Internet Explorer. This is version 1.5, which is the earliest version that we have here with that nice old icon. 
them. But what we can do is go to sites like google.com and I actually did, if you guys saw my video, it'll be linked up in the cards, where I tried to install uh, Internet Explorer version 1.0 on Windows 10. Uh, I actually got version 1.5 to work and we actually went to google.com. And if you saw that video, you'll know that when I went to the Google homepage, it looked exactly like this, completely broken with a bunch of uh, a CSS uh, code up here at the top, which obviously does not display properly. Also, one thing of note is um, this version of IE does not allow you to use your mouse wheel to scroll up and down the page, but you can see that it actually works right here on Windows XP. I mean, this was a browser that came out in 1995. It was actually bundled with Microsoft Plus. Uh, this was before Microsoft bundled it directly with Windows, which they would later do with some of these newer versions here. Version 2.0 of Internet Explorer was uh, obviously released, you know, a little bit after version 1.0. This one came out in November of 1995, so actually a couple months after uh, IE 1.0 was released in August of 1995. Now, Internet Explorer 2.0 is actually kind of interesting because it was the very first version that was actually bundled with a Windows release. Although it was not a, a consumer release, it was Windows NT version 4.0. That was what it was actually bundled with. Uh, it also came included in the box with Windows 95 OSR 1. One, but it was not pre-installed on the operating system itself. It was included on a separate CD called the Internet Explorer Starter Kit. Um, so, but it, it did still come in the box. Now, version 3.0, however, that was the very first version that came bundled, uh, came pre-installed on a consumer version of Windows. In this case, it was Windows 95 OSR 2. So this would, when you would install Windows 95 and log into it for the first time, this icon would be on your desktop. And that was one of the major factors that uh, Microsoft was accused of being a monopoly by the federal government here in the US in the late 90s and early 2000s, that whole court case that went on for a while. Uh, because Microsoft, basically by doing this, gained a very large market share on uh, the consumer browser space because they had literally a browser bundled with Windows, but that is definitely a story for another time. Right now, though, this is Internet Explorer version 3.0. There's this very interesting design going on up here. I don't actually really remember that. That's, that's kind of interesting. But to me, this is actually starting to look a little bit more like IE 6.0. You can see, like, if I have this one compared to version 2.0, uh, oh, actually, check that out. That's interesting. So you cannot have version, you can have version 1.5. Uh, running, but you cannot have version 2.01 and 3.01 does the exact same thing. So these are probably, my guess would be that these versions right here are using the uh, NT Virtual DOS machine. Let's actually verify that by going into Task Manager. And yep, there you go, right there, ntvdm.exe. So that is actually, if I hit end process here, Yep, you can see that's exactly um, what it was doing. So it is using the uh, NT Virtual DOS machine to run version 2.01, 3.0, 3.01, and maybe even 3.03, .03, yep, which is why that it has the uh, older classic theme. Apparently now it's actually um, spitting out an error message here. Version 4.0, my guess, is that this, yes, yeah, so you can see it actually runs with the proper Luna theme up here, so this is not using the NT Virtual DOS machine. We can go to About Internet Explorer, and you can see we get this nice solid white box here. It does not display anything. Yeah, that's actually very, I wonder if it's like, can we go to google.com here? Okay, so we can still go to websites, but for whatever reason, this page it was on was just not wanting to, uh, to uh, display properly. But you can see that google.com loads uh, definitely much better. As you can see, this does not load the most modern version of the Google homepage, but it still shows up properly with this older version. This is the one that has the hyperlinks up here at the top rather than the little uh, icon over here with a little grid that you can click on to go to your different applications or, 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 or pages on the Google website. So yeah, that is, uh, that is version 4.01 of Internet Explorer. Uh, this version right here, 4.01, this version specific, uh, was released in November of 1997, and uh, it came bundled with Windows 98. So this was the one that came with Windows 98. Uh, version 5.0, we actually have two different releases. We have version 5.01 and version 5.5. Version 5.01 actually was released in November of 1999. Version 5.5 uh, which is version 5.55, but version 5.5 came out in July of 2000. This one was bundled with Windows 2000. This one was bundled with Windows ME, so definitely uh, pretty cool. So we'll launch version 5.01 here, and you can see 
that uh, it still has the older uh, Windows logo up here. That's something that you can probably see between these versions has definitely started to change. It started out in version 1.5 with this um, old Windows flag logo actually with the clouds uh, in the background kind of animating when you would go to a different page. Then it very slowly turned into the IE logo um, in version 3.0. Version 2.01 had the same logo as 1.5. And uh, then in version 4.0, we still have the IE logo, it's just a lot smaller. And now in version 5.0, we are back to the Windows flag, although this is just a little bit of a uh, different design than the one in 1.5. So uh, this one, version 5.0 and version 4.0 at first glance look very, very similar. You can see that the toolbar by default in this version 5.5 or 5.01 is a little bit thinner. But uh, the menu bar, as you can see, is, is kind of exactly the same. Um, it's got the same buttons. I mean, we can probably like increase the size of this if we wanted to. Uh, you know, we can go to large icons. And even with that, you can see it actually does not show up exactly like it does here. Um, but still, you know, pretty, uh, pretty close. You can see we've got some new icons here. We have a Windows Messenger icon, which actually will open up the XP version of Messenger. And if we go into help and about here, you can see we actually have a bit of an interesting effect going on. Obviously, it says it's Internet Explorer version 5.0, but it's actually pulling the version string from uh, Windows XP's version of Internet Explorer that is bundled with it, which in this case, since we're running Service Pack 3 and we have a, uh, you know, update pack installed, we have version 8.0 as opposed to the regular 6.0. So yeah, that is version 5.01. Version 5.55 is going to obviously be very, very similar. We can go to Help and About, and you can see this one actually looks a little bit different. It's looking to uh, appear more like uh, the Windows XP one. You can see you've got the new Windows flag down here. Uh, version 6.0, as we all know, uh, came bundled with Windows XP. We've got two different versions of it right here. These are both 6.00 releases, but this one is 2800.1106, and this one is 2900.2180. So these are two separate releases, but they are still uh, the same like initial version. They're still 6.00, they're just uh, different builds. Um, so we can launch 6.0 here. So we can go to help and about here, and you can see my suspicions were correct. These about boxes between version five and version six look exactly the same. You've got the same logo here uh, that you have in version 5.0. So yeah, that is version 6.0. You, you can see another difference is the Windows flag up here has been changed to the Windows XP flag. Now version 7.0 marked another kind of big transition or not really like a big transition, but uh, a, a change in the Internet Explorer series of products. Um, you can see that these icons, kind of how they've gradually changed over time. Uh, but from version 1.0, which we of course don't have here, all the way up to version 6.0, uh, it, it was called Microsoft Internet Explorer. Version 7.0 was the first version to call itself Windows Internet Explorer as opposed to Microsoft Internet Explorer. Again, just a very, very minor change. You can see that the interface has kind of changed uh, actually a lot. You can also see that between version 6.0 and version 7.0, you have uh, a, a lot of interface changes going on up here. Um, you have a new kind of much thinner toolbar. Um, you have a new tab interface as opposed to having to open up separate windows in version 6.0. Uh, you can actually open up multiple tabs, which is a very, very nice feature. And the first time that Internet Explorer had this feature, uh, you obviously have um, some newer uh, designed buttons, some newer icons trying to kind of correspond with Windows Vista, making these icons look a little bit more modern. Um, you got a, a slight remnants of the arrow interface going on up here with these buttons. So like if I go to uh, google.com, you can see like if I search for Michael MJD here, you can see that, yep, these definitely look like those error buttons if you guys have seen those before in Vista. Now version eight and version seven are very similar. You have a very similar interface going on. Uh, it's not exactly identical, but there are a lot of uh, similarities. It would probably be pretty difficult to tell the difference between these two if you kind of put them up side by side and said, which one is seven, which one is eight. Um, obviously going to the about box is going to give it away. Now one thing we've been talking about a lot over the course of this video is web browsers. I mean, that's literally what this entire video is about, is Internet Explorer. And hey, maybe you're in the position right now where you're thinking of making your own website, whether that be for personal use or if you're starting a business and wanna create a new online presence. Whatever that it might be, if you're interested in saving money on a web hosting plan, you might be interested in checking out this video's sponsor, Hostinger. 
Hostinger is an affordable website hosting provider with features designed to make managing your site extremely easy. Even if you don't know anything about HTML, they also offer domain registration and some of their hosting plans even include a free domain for the first year. Their custom H panel lets you get quick access to your account information and provides quick links to some of the most used features. One of my favorites is the auto installer. This allows you to easily install a wide variety of software on your website. I recently used this feature to set up a new WordPress site for my YouTube channel at michaelmjd.com. Instead of dealing with manually copying files to my web server and creating MySQL databases, all I had to do was fill out a small form and press install. It's that simple. Hostinger offers multiple hosting packages to suit your budget. Pricing starts at just 99 cents per month for a four year commitment. So if you're interested in trying out Hostinger today, click the link in this video's description and use my coupon code MichaelMJD at checkout to save up to 91% off any web hosting plan. All right, so back to the IE collection. One of the nice things about having this, this pack installed is as I said at the beginning of the video, uh, you can have multiple versions of Internet Explorer or running at one time. So you see right now we've got version six right here. We've got version seven and we have version eight. Um, so we've got three versions of Internet Explorer running simultaneously on this system. And we can add to that. Let's launch Internet Explorer 5.0. Um, let's launch Internet Explorer version 4.0. Now these versions right here, we can only run like one of them between 2.01 and 3.03, because if we try to run another one here, you'll see it will give uh, this error here because it thinks that you're trying to run the same program. Uh, and it just says cannot start more than one copy of the specified program. And this is again running under the NT virtual DOS machine. So we've got, what is this version 3.03 here for Windows 3.1. And we can also do version 1.5. So there you go, guys. We've got all these versions of Internet Explorer running under Windows XP. Again, there's no real reason for doing this in the year 2020. This is kind of just for you guys who maybe haven't used Internet Explorer in a while and, and you know just kind of want to use one of these older versions for the nostalgia factor. That is really the only reason why I can see um, anybody using this. Maybe if you're a web developer and want to see if you can get your website to work on IE 1.5, uh, you could definitely do this. This would definitely be helpful to you. It is available to you for free. But guys, there you have it. Um, that is a look at the Utilu or Utilu, however you pronounce it, um, Internet Explorer collection for uh, Windows 95 all the way through Windows 7. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video and if you want to see more like it, definitely be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already uh, to get notified whenever that I upload a new video, which I do every single week on this channel. And uh, if you guys have any comments or any video suggestions for me, be sure to leave those down below. Uh, maybe you guys want to see me run this on Windows 10 or at least attempt to. Maybe you guys want to see me run this on Windows 95 and see if we can get all of those versions to work that it says uh, will work under Windows 95, which is version 1.0 to version 5.5. And who knows, maybe we can even try to, uh, you know, pull some kernel X magic and actually get some of the newer versions to work. That might be a pretty cool video. If you guys want to see that, be sure to let me know down in the comments section. And uh, as always, guys, I just want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.